This is a quick look at some of the initial tests that I've been running to take a closer look at Hiplet Billard's direct positive process. I'm using Rives Cream, which is a lightweight, unsized paper. As I continue with my tests, I'll be testing a number of different papers with different sizings and preparations, along with different dilutions. But for now, I'm using the unsized Rives, and I start out by treating the paper with a 2% solution of ammonium chloride. I'm applying drops to the surface of the paper, and then I'll use a fine brush to brush it on and into the surface of the paper. After that, I'm going to force dry the paper with blow dryer, and then I'll apply a 20% solution of silver nitrate, which I'll then brush on as well. After I've done that, I'm going to force dry the paper once more until it's bone dry, and then I'll bring the paper outside and I'll expose it to sunlight, where it will then darken uh, relatively quickly, uh, and it'll go down to a, a quite beautiful deep plum purple color. After I complete the initial exposure of the salted paper to sunlight and it's darkened, I'm going to bring it back into my darkroom. I'm going to remove the tape and I'm going to get it ready for an initial wash with distilled water. While the paper is sitting in the distilled water, I'm also going to prepare a solution of sodium chloride, which is regular table salt. Once that's prepared, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add that to the tray with the paper and the distilled water in it. This wash sequence helps to remove and precipitate out remaining ammonium chloride as well as remaining silver nitrate from the paper. Once the wash is done, I'm going to remove the water, lay the paper out into the tray, and then I'm going to force dry it again with the blow dryer until it's bone dry. So the next thing that I'm going to do is prepare a package that's going to allow me to keep the paper moist with a solution of potassium iodide. Now, Bayard used a piece of slate with sand sprinkled on top, and that was then saturated with the potassium iodide. In this case, instead of slate and sand, I'm going to use mylar and blotter paper. So I'll go ahead and I'll apply a fairly liberal amount of a 4% solution of potassium iodide to the blotter paper so that it's saturated. And then I'm going to take the dried paper and I'm going to place that on top of the blotter paper and then I'm going to apply potassium iodide onto the paper itself as well. When the potassium iodide comes in contact with the silver chloride in the paper, it undergoes yet another change signified by a color change. I'll then brush the potassium iodide onto the surface of the paper, and the whole surface of the paper will take on that same red color. Once I've done that, I'm going to close up my mylar package, and I'm going to seal it up with tape so that it's airtight and so that none of the potassium iodide will evaporate during the exposure. Once that's all done and the mylar packet with the silver chloride paper that's been sensitized with potassium iodide is all packaged up nicely in the mylar with the blotter paper, I'm going to put it into my plate holder and I'm going to get it ready for the exposure. For these initial tests, I'm using a consistent seam that I can compare from test to test. And I'm just going to photograph the stairs coming off the back of my house. I'm making sure that I'm doing this on a day that is very sunny and very bright. And I'm choosing my start time at a time of day, generally about noon or a little bit earlier, when the sun is nearing its highest point in the sky and is as bright as it's possibly going to be. I'm going to take a meter reading, and I'm able to read EV16 and two-thirds off of the white of the door. So once I've done my meter reading and I have an idea of the intensity of light and some control areas in the image, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start the exposure. Now the Bayard process is very slow, so this exposure is actually going to be one hour in direct sunlight. And once that hour has elapsed, I'm going to take another set of meter readings Having taken an exposure reading at the beginning of the exposure and at the end of the exposure allows me to extrapolate some data around the changing qualities of the light throughout the duration of the exposure. 
And once I open the holder in my darkroom, I can see that I do in fact have an image. And now I'm going to go ahead and take the next series of steps so that I can fix it and compare it to my other tests. So I'm going to open up the holder and I'm going to remove the mylar blotter paper, silver chloride paper packet. And I'm going to start removing all of the tape that I used to seal it up so that I can remove the print from the packet. And once I get the print out of the mylar packet, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it into a tray and I'm going to apply a 5% solution of sodium thiosulfate or hypo fixer. And this is going to stabilize and fix the print so that it is stable. And once it's done fixing, I'll pour off the fixer and I'll let the print wash in uh, running water. And once the wash is done, I have a final print using the BR Direct Positive process, which I can compare to my other tests. And here you can see a number of those tests. And here's a closer look at some of the comparisons that I'm looking at. So the print in the middle and the print on the right are using the same dilutions of ammonium chloride, but they're using 20% solutions of silver nitrate. And you can see that there's a pretty significant difference despite using the exact same chemistry.